Not one sign of it, Mr. Hale. The only thing I can figure out is that Andrews just didn't turn off where he was supposed to. If they don't catch up with us pretty soon, it's gonna be too late. It's already too late, Duke. I can't wait any longer. I'm moving out. Get ready to move out, folks. Get ready to move out. Charlie, Duke. Bill. I'd like to talk to you. Boys, I had no choice but to move out. You don't have to explain to us, Chris. Flint's been gone four days. He isn't back. That means there are more dry water holes ahead. That means we'll have to turn way south, and that adds another week to our trip. I can't help thinking of those people on those three wagons. Neither can I, Duke, but think of the nearly 300 people on this train. I don't want them spending the winter at the east end of Donner Lake. Isn't there any hope at all for them? Yes, there's hope. Provided they're still alive, and provided you can find them and turn them toward Pilot Rock. They could still catch up with us there. Chris, Charlie and I have been talking. I know, Bill, and believe me, I've been thinking about it, too, but I can't spare you or Charlie either one. Now, Duke, I'm not making it a direct order. You don't have to, Mr. Hill. I'll go. All right, come on over to the wagon. I'll show you some maps. Bill, you don't think you send the boy up to do a man's work, do you? Chris has got no other choice, Charlie. What would you have done? Me? I've done the same as Mr. Chris. Then I'll start praying. I think Chris has already done that. Here's where we are right now. And if they'd have turned off at Briner Crossing like they planned, they'd have joined up with us two days ago. So obviously they didn't turn off. Why? It was all laid out for him. Glenn Andrews is a cautious man. Don't blame him too much for it. He has reason to be. He probably figured we had plenty of water here at Sycamore and would wait for him. Couldn't gamble on falling in known water holes. I'd put him someplace in this area. Well, that's the way I figure. Now, if that's so, your only possible chance of joining up with us after you find them is to cut south of Lava Buttes here, straight across through Big Springs to Pilot Rock. It's a Redmond cutoff, isn't it? That's right. But just because there was one Donner party doesn't mean wagons still don't go through Donner Pass. The Redmond party was different, wasn't it? Glenn Andrews made the right decision, but for the first time in 20 years, Big Spring was dry. We lost 15 people. Suppose Andrews refuses to take that chance again. It's the only possible chance you have of survival, Duke. Now tell him to turn and head for Big Spring.
What are you doing here? I might ask you the same thing. I'm Glenn Andrews. I'm in charge of these wagons. I figured you might be. My name's Duke Shannon from the Chris Hale wagon train. It's good of you to come down and meet us, Shannon. I didn't come down to meet you. I came down to find out what happened to you. You're four days overdue. Do you realize that? Now, I don't know how long you've been in this business, but I don't measure a successful trip by the clock. I measure it by a safe arrival. My people have plenty of food and water, and I like it like that. I'm glad to hear they've got plenty of water. They're going to need it. Now, if Chris Hale is getting testy because he had a little weight, he can forget it. He's got a good camp at Sycamore. Lots of supplies. You're dead wrong there, Andrews. Sycamore Springs is dry. We've been on water rations for over a week, and there are dry holes ahead. The wagon train pulled out two days ago. They can't do that. I had a contract. You should have turned off about 30 miles back. Who is this man? What's going on around here? You want to tell him, Andrews, or do you want me to? This is Duke Shannon of the Chris Hale wagon train. And about time. I've got several thousand dollars worth of merchandise on that wagon of mine. Well, where's the wagon train? Heading west. We're to meet him at Pilot Rock. Pilot Rock? I thought it was a place called Sycamore. It would have been. If you'd turned off where you should have. You'd better explain yourself, Andrews. I've got commitments in San Francisco. I can't afford to be running behind schedule. Look, I'm trying to do what's best for all of you. Did you or did you not miss that turnoff? What did you expect me to do? It would have been another two days of desert that way. With a woman and two kids and a drunken driver and a man and his wife who don't even talk to each other. My children and I haven't asked for any special concessions, Mr. Andrews. And my wife's and my personal affairs are none of your business. Well, how much extra is this going to cost me and how do we get there? It's going to cost you a lot of sweat, mister. Same as the rest of us. As for getting there, we're going to turn these wagons and head directly west. We'll pull out of here in about an hour. All right. I'm ready to go. I have affairs in San Francisco that can't wait while we stand around here talking about it. Montgomery, you're out of your mind. Do you know what that route is across there? I know what it is. Redmond Cut Off. I've been over and over a thousand times in my imagination. Calling each grain of sand. Trying to figure out where it was my wife and two daughters died. Hobie. Who is this man? Mr. Redmond's my driver. Redmond? Hobie Redmond? That's right. People always seem surprised. They seem to think that I died out there with my wife and two daughters. That wasn't it at all. You see, I was in California, and I had... Hobie, please, I've asked you not to talk about it. Oh, two daughters, I'm sorry. I didn't even know they were awake. I wouldn't want to say anything to upset those two little girls. Mr. Andrews, I know how you must feel going back over every inch of it. You wasn't to blame. Everybody knows that. They all know how you went for water. Crawled back on your hands and knees and found them all dead. Hobie, you'd better get some sleep. All right. Just don't want to cause any trouble. You know something? I'm glad we're going back that way. Maybe if I can see how it happened, see just how it was. Hobie, will you please? Sure. Sure, Mrs. Carlson. I'm sorry. I'm awful sorry. Why is he along with you people? I told you he's my driver. He was all I could afford. Isn't your husband along with you? No. My husband's not along with me. Come on, girl. That drunken fool. Oh, Clyde, please. The man lost his wife and his two daughters. He loved his family. I'd expect you to stick up for a weakling. You always have. That way you never have to face up to any challenge. Well, now you've met the people on this train, Shannon. You see why, if I heard, it was on the side of caution? Why'd you bring a man like Hobie Redmond with you? I'm as human as anybody else. It's the first job the man's had in two years. Don't you suppose I feel I have some obligation to him? Sorry I asked the question, Andrews. 
It's no offense intended, I'm sure. Well, now I suppose you and I have to figure out what to do about this situation. We've already decided. We're heading for Big Spring. With a bunch of people who've never driven across this desert before. They'll just have to learn. Well, I won't allow it. There's got to be another way. What other way, Andrews? You're already too far out to turn back. The next spring north is Sycamore, and that's dry. If you're planning to find another wagon train, that's out too. The word's been spread. And every wagon train that's behind us has taken the northern route. But, but you don't know what it's like out there. You don't know the chance you're taking. I know what kind of a chance Chris Hale is taking, saying he'll wait for us at Pilot Rock. Nearly 300 people on that wagon train. And they all stand a good chance of spending the winter at the east end of Donner Lake because you held them up. Now we're going to head for Pilot Rock by way of Big Springs, and we're going to meet them on time. If you don't want to take charge of these wagons, just say so. I won't be responsible. Well, I guess that answers my question for me. From now on, you take orders from me. And the first one is you get that wagon ready and tie that water bell down tight. We're pulling out of here in about an hour, just like I said. And we're going on water rations starting now. <laughs> driving a team much lately. Shouldn't taken a job then. Well, I've been doing fine. You ask Mrs. Carlson. I don't have to ask Mrs. Carlson. I saw how you stood guard. Oh, yeah, about that. I I just took a nip. You see, I hadn't been feeling good lately. It was, it was hot and it, well, it just sort of hit me. Obie, I've got something to tell you and I'm going to tell you just once. We've got some pretty rough going ahead of us and I'm going to need help. All the help I can get. If a man can't hold up his end, he's just going to have to fall back and do for himself. Is that clear? Yeah, I didn't catch your name, uh, Mr. Just call me Duke. Now, you stay away from that bottle. Mrs. Carlson and the children are your responsibility. If anything happens to them, you're going to have to face up to it. Yeah. I guess that's the trouble, Duke. You see, I get looking at those two little girls. Well, they're just about the age my little girls would be. Feel sorry for yourself someplace else, Hobie. There's no time for it here. That was a cruel thing to say. It's a pretty cruel piece of desert we're about to cross. Now you get your children together and get that wagon ready. You can tell me how much you hate me after we get to Pilot Rock. Feeling all right now, Hobie? Oh, yes, yeah, Sandra, I'm, I'm feeling much better. I saw you stumble and fall down. Mama said you were real sick. You get sick a lot, don't you, Hobie? Yes, honey, I guess I do. We don't want you to get sick anymore, Hobie. Lisa and me like you a whole lot. We like you almost as much as we like our daddy. I promise you, I'm going to try not to get sick anymore. to do better than this, Montgomery. You're falling behind already. 
you can't keep up, we're gonna have to lighten your load. You don't touch one thing on this wagon. I paid good money to make this trip. The only thing your money's good for out here is to buy you a grave. Now close up there. Ah! tough, Mr. Shannon. Somebody had to be in charge. You said you wouldn't be. Said I wouldn't accept the responsibility. Same thing, isn't it? Tell me, Mr. Shannon, have you made up your mind exactly what you intend to do? Head south of the Butte, straight for Big Springs. Refill the water barrels there. And if Big Spring is dry? It won't be. Just what I planned once, more than two years ago. I just hope, Mr. Shannon, that you won't have to spend the rest of your life the way I have, with dead men's eyes staring at you. Two girls were on that wagon. I kept doubling up. You're doing all right, Andrews. Just keep going. Just keep going. That's easy to say, isn't it, Shannon? That's what I kept telling them. Wait till their eyes start burning into your back. Till the horses start dropping dead, and then the people, one by one. Shannon, please, I beg you, let's turn back. You know better than that. We can't turn back. Well, then quit lying to them. Quit telling them there's water at Big Springs. I say there is, just because it was dry once. Could be again. You know it, and so do I. I don't know it. I just know we've got to meet Chris Hale at Pilot Rock if we want to keep these people alive. Once more, Montgomery. Start unloading it. All you're gonna do is kill that team. And I told you, not one box, not one bale. I'll kill you if you try it. All right. No sense in killing your wife. Up front, Mrs. Montgomery. You can ride away with Mrs. Carlson. That's right. Go on, leave me. That's what you've been wanting to do, isn't it? You're on your own now. You fall behind again, and there's nobody coming back to help you. Get back. your wagon. Want to give us a hand here? Would you have helped me if I'd broken down? Obi. One more day to Big Spring and fresh water. Just keep going, Mrs. Redmond. You and the girls will be just fine. Your horses aren't the best, Ruth. They're getting pretty weak. You want me to start unloading? I don't mind. I never had anything worth keeping. Never have had. You've got two daughters. What have I got? I didn't mean that. You know I didn't. I don't know what you mean. I don't know anything anymore. I don't want to fight with you. I don't want to fight with anyone. We're going to have to take turns riding from now on. Only one at a time. That includes the kids. You can't do that, Shannon. Not to the kids. I said it includes the kids. 
Is that clear? You haven't heard me complain, have you? No, Ruth, I haven't. Not once. Now, you listen to your Uncle Hovey. Now, we're gonna let you walk a while, just like the grown-ups. Now, you walk on the shady side of the wagon. And try not to get too near those wheels. All right, Uncle Hovey. We'll remember. All right. Come on. I want something to drink, Mommy. It just makes my mouth dry to eat that. Wagons here and every bit of my merchandise is here. Are you disappointed, Mr. Shannon? No, I'm not disappointed. I'm glad you made it. Well, I'm going to take your water barrel and put it on the Andrews wagon. You've been after me ever since we started this trip, just because I've got more than you have. I don't start anything. Me start anything. You always take the other side. You've been in my way every move forward I've ever tried to make. I'm putting your water barrel on the Andrews wagon so I can keep closer control of it. I'm putting Mrs. Carlson's water there, too. I'll beat you yet, Shannon. And I'm gonna get through whether the rest of you do or not. Cut. Get out of my way! Give me a hand, Hobie. I'm putting all the water barrels on one wagon. Are you sure that's what you want to do? Taking a good look at Andrews lately? That started when we first saw that stuff along the trail. It's as if he was living it all over again. I thought if I gave him the responsibility for the water bells, I might take his mind off of it. Yeah, I feel sorry for him, Duke. You've read about it, you know he must have tried. Going for water by himself, coming back, finding him all dead. Everybody called him a hero, but Still lost all those people. This must not be very easy on you either, Hobie. I keep thinking about it. How if I'd only kept my family together? If I'd only been with them, maybe I could have pulled them through. That's why I want to go on. I want to see where they died. If I could only feel near them just once more. You think I'm wrong, Duke? No, Hobie. I don't think you're wrong. I've gone to visit my grandfather's grave. I guess there's a lot of folks that have felt that way, too. Come on, let's get those water barrels. And then did the prince and the princess live happily ever after, Mommy? That's right, Sandra. Happily ever after. Mommy, when you and Daddy were married, did you say you were going to live happily ever after? Oh. Well, I suppose so. Well, now, come on, let's all get... Mommy, soup. why are we running away from Daddy? Mr. Montgomery, can I talk to you? Mr. Montgomery, I don't like the way things have been going. I'm getting a little bit tired of the way that kid Shannon's been singling me out, too. Well, you know why he's doing that, don't you? Oh, I've seen it happen before. A young kid, his first command. I saw it happen time and again in the war. You mean he's not sure of himself? He's counting too much on Big Spring, just as I did once. Well, what are we going to do? I'm taking over. I'll need your help. Well, if you plan to take over, why have you waited so long? Because so far everything's been all right. But if Big Spring is dry, and that kid insists on going on, I don't need to tell you I've been over that route. I don't need to tell you what happened. But there's no other way to go. Now, that's where you're wrong. You think I haven't studied every inch of this country, trying to figure out where I went wrong? 
There must be another way. Anyway, we can't go over that cutoff. Well, have you talked to Shannon about this? Now, what good would that do? Hasn't he tried over and over again to get you to leave your life savings behind? Didn't he take your water? Oh, a kid like that gets drunk with power. It's got to be his way or none at all. We've got to take over, Montgomery. Well? For the first time in my life, I've got a little money. And a chance to make a lot more. I'm not going to give it up. Good. Good. Go over and sit in the shade for a while, huh? How much further is it to Big Spring? We should be there in a couple of hours. Oh, I never dreamed washing my face could be such a luxury. When we get there, I'm going to pour water over my head and soak and soak. You do that, Ruth. I hope she can, Shannon. You've lied. There's no water here. You want to see us all die. Please, you have to listen to me. We're through listening, Shannon. I'm taking over, Shannon. All right, Andrews. Suppose you do take over. Just what do you expect to do? I'm turning straight north. You do and you kill all of us. There's no water north of here. There's none west of here either. Didn't I try it once? And spring is dry, Shannon. Dry. Don't you know what that means? Yeah, I know what it means. It means we tighten up even more on the rations. It means we lighten the loads. That means we keep moving west, right towards Pilot Rock. You're wrong about this water hole, Shannon. Maybe you're wrong now. Andrew says he knows another way. He's lying. There's only one way out of here. And he knows it. If you try to take me back over that cutoff, I'll kill you. I don't think so, Andrews. The Duke says we're going straight on. So does this rifle. Now, drop him. You knew it'd be dry. You knew it all the time. I didn't know it. I took a chance. But we made it, didn't we? And now we're well over halfway to Pilot Rock. 
instead of back there wandering around someplace in the middle of nowhere. Obi, go through the wagons. Bring me all the guns you can find. That includes yours. I didn't know what to believe, Shannon. Andrew said we could turn north. You know a way north of here, Andrews. Spell it out. Tell us about it. I don't know what's north of here, but I know what's straight ahead. The skeletons of 15 people. Dead men's eyes staring at you. That's what's ahead. You listen to me. All of you. If we stick together, we can make it. But if we start pulling and fighting against each other, we'll wind up like those others did. It'll happen anyway. You'll all die. Didn't I go through here? Don't I know? What's the matter with all of you? We made it this far, haven't we? So did the Redmond Party. What do you know about the Redmond Party? We have twice as much water and half as many people to drink it as they did. I won't move. I won't budge over an inch of it. You'll move. If I have to drag you at the end of a rope. When I get through here, there's only going to be one gun left in this outfit. Mine. If anybody tries to go back or starts to panic, I'll use it. and help him. Just keep moving. You'll follow on foot. No, not Clyde. I know him too well. Then we'll just have to leave him behind. Well, then you'll have to leave me too, Mr. Shannon. A wife's place is with her husband. You said that for my benefit, didn't you? You're blaming me because I left my husband. Oh, did you ever live in a hole in the ground in the middle of the Kansas prairie with the closest neighbor 80 miles away? I just said I was going back to my husband. Well, I'm not. Do you hear? Six years of crop failure and grasshoppers and heat and dust and dirt from the roof dropping into every mouthful of food. I've got a right to live like other people. I have relatives in San Francisco that'll give my girls the things I never had. What right do you have telling me what to do with my life? Goodbye, Ruth. I hope you get everything you want. I said we were going on. Mr. Shannon, the only way you can stop me is to shoot me. What have I done? But we can't just leave them like this. Keep moving. But... Move them out, Hobie. Yeah. Everything we own. Every penny. I was gonna make a million dollars. Wear nice clothes. Meet people who didn't know that I used to sweep out a saloon and you used to wash clothes for a living. Clyde, it doesn't really matter. Oh, well, not to you, it doesn't. You never did care what people thought. You didn't want to come with me. You were always afraid to meet new people. But... Agnes, all I wanted to do was make a little money. Tell me what's wrong with wanting to make a little money. Nothing. But you lost track of everything else. Of all your values. Your old friends. Even of me. I remember my father killing himself, trying to grub out a living. 
My sister dying because we couldn't... We couldn't afford a doctor. And you, those, those first years, washing other people's dirty clothes, Agnes, I just can't stand the thought of being a failure. Clyde. You could never be a failure. Not to me. you could mail the world to someone for a present. We're all counting the days to when we can be with Papa again. Mr. Andrews left three days ago to look for water. He took the only horse. We buried Eileen. Mr. Smith went to Saint, shot himself. Wife, Kathy and I are alone. I put the silver teapot on Kathy's grave. As long as anyone was alive, I kept telling them Mr. Andrews would be back. I knew from the first he wouldn't be. He has enough water to get him to Pilot Rock. This is the sixth day. He isn't coming. Wherever he is, may God forgive him.
team's getting awful weak. Got to strip down the wagon. Mr. Andrews wants to see you. He's dying, Hobie. I've always been afraid when I was a kid. My stepfather set a deer trap. He used to make me get up at four o'clock to go check that trap. It was so dark. I used to just hide in the brush and shake. Afraid to move, and then I'd come back, say there was nothing in the trap, and I'd get back into bed and shake. People don't know how scared a kid can get. One day, they found a deer in the trap, and He'd been there about 10 days, then they knew I'd never been there. It was like that again, Hobie. I guess a pile of rock. There was nobody there. I was afraid to go back all the way along. Could you understand that? It's like a deer trap all over again. I was a coward, Obi. That, that's my sin. Forgive me. Carlson's afraid of another crop failure. Montgomery is afraid to let go of his worldly goods. And I was afraid to face life without a bottle. Look, we're the only ones who know where this last page was written. It's gone now. Let's let the dead stay dead. It's me, Bill. We made it. What ailed you up? <laughs> we stopped for a couple cold beers. Duke, you saved our lives. In more ways than one. Well, do you want to tell us about Andrews? Well, it was his team and wagon that brought us through, along with Duke, yeah? You all did your part, Hobie. You know that. Well, I want to say goodnight to those kids. I also want to stop by that water barrel. I'm a heavy drinker, you know. Fine people, Mr. Hale. All of them.
sent a boy to do a man's work. It looks to me like a man came back. I've seen his pictures. He's seen you? <laughs> he always wear that hat? I guess so. Yeah. i seen pictures. What they call it, his, um, his white plume? Well, that's a good hat, ain't it? Might fit me. It wouldn't. We, uh, we're gonna leave him like that? Why not? It seems kind of funny, that's all. Him, ending up here, alone. He left company. <laughs> yeah. I figured he'd be bigger. Did you? Yeah. My pa used to play guitar. Learned it in jail off a of Mex who was waiting to be hanged. <laughs> Instead of rocker buying me, why, he'd sing me some of them old songs about him, and Jim Bridger, Kit Carson. I figured he'd be ten feet tall. Martin Onyx? Yeah. He was. That line, out of clothes, out of condoms, out of condoms, out of wit. That jack will do me nicely. Sorry, partner. What's the matter, over?
wonder what's spooking him. I don't know. Coyote, maybe. Or Jagger? Yeah, it could be. It's been a dry year. I'd noticed. Well, I came up here scouting for water, didn't I? Yeah, so maybe we're not the only ones. Whoever named this Rushing Springs really had a sense of humor. How's our late lift mended friend Jack coming along? Could you just light the candles and lay out the double damask dinner napkins? Well, <clears throat> have you iced the champagne? Not a bad thought. Go nice on a hot night. Yeah. Well, well one rabbit Alice Shannon coming up. Oh, get up, gentlemen. Sorry to disturb your dinner. Wouldn't want to shoot you, might hit the rabbit. That seasoning's no good. Ruins the taste. <laughs> All right. Leave your guns there and the food, then move away from the fire. Come on, come on. Man's life's worth more than a rabbit. Including yours. That's a moot point. Hard to discuss on an empty stomach. <laughs> well? Ah, that's much better. No. That's very wise. Now move away from the fire. Pretty rugged country to be walking. Horse went lame. <laughs> That's so? I'm walking through there, you former. I remember. Lost count. Empty world, dead world. Heck, landscape of the moon. <laughs> What are you doing on the moon, huh? Scout for a wagon train. Here? Yeah. Looking for water. Wells have dried up on the trail. Came up into the high country. Got to be water someplace. I have water. Got to have water. Man can't live without water. Man needs water even on the moon. He asked about water, uh, about some coffee. Coffee? Yeah, the wine of the prairie. Why not? Take off the chill, huh? Chill? Oh, I'm so cold on the moon, huh? Hurry up with the coffee. I'll freeze him. One cup of coffee, he's coming up. Ah! Ah! How are you now, Wes? Roasted rabbit. They didn't even touch it, Flint. They didn't have to. Fever? Probably. Oh, a minute ago, he said he was cold. He probably was. Fever on a night like this? I saw a man once with a temperature of 108 and he was calling for blankets. So the air felt like icicles. Help me turn him over, will you? Hey, I've seen him before. Think so? Yeah, I recognize the outfit. It's a telegram addressed to Martin Onyx. I thought he was dead. I mean, all my life I've heard stories about Martin Onyx. He's the man that opened up this country. At least one of them. He was married to a Cheyenne princess. Silverwater was her name. Written a book someplace. He was in the war, too. Scouted for General Sherman at Chattanooga. Took a troop of horses clear around the rebel lines and didn't lose a man. That's what they say. Why, he's more than just a hero, Flint. He's a... Well, he's a legend. Like the time he cleared up Pueblo. Toughest town in the Rockies. Took him two days. <laughs> Imagine us getting bushwhacked by Martin Onyx. It was practically an honor. You take the honor, I'll take the rabbit. Must have been plenty rough on him. Traveling through that desert? No. Trying to live up to his legend. Oh, 
was thirsty. I don't blame him. Sorry I woke you. Don't be. I don't remember last night too clearly, but I have a feeling I owe you an apology. Not at all. Just a rabbit. Guess I'm not a very good bandit. No, I'm not surprised. Wearing this wire. Sent to Mr. Martin Onyx, St. Louis. Terms agreeable. Expect you purgatory wells as soon as possible, son. Jedediah Giddings, mayor. Is that where you're headed, purgatory wells? Any reason why I shouldn't be? Not that I can think of. They must be paying you a lot to bring you all the way up here. Think so? Yeah. But I guess with a name like Martin Onyx, the sky's the limit. <laughs> Never thought of it like that. Hadn't you? If you don't mind riding a pack horse, you're welcome to ride into town with me. Well, I don't want to put you to any trouble. No trouble. All right, thanks. Like I said, last night is fuzzy. I guess maybe I was seeing double. No, that was my partner. I sent him back to pick up the wagon train and bring it on into town. Oh, that's good. You, uh, you know, by chance, have a razor, do you? Yeah. I must water to shave by. Oh, I'll just dry trim. After all, a man in my position has to keep up appearances. More or less. I mean, after all, they're expecting Martin Onyx. Yep. That's what the wire said. You live in town, son? Hotel? Place to stay? Thatcher! <gasps> Thatcher House! Straight up! You're... You're... Yes, yeah, son? Martin Onyx! Disturb you, but I... Oh, no, it's Mr. Onyx, isn't it? I have your room all fixed. I've had him ready for two weeks, just in case. Oh. Well, that's... That's very kind of you. <laughs> Mayor didn't mention about you bringing no friends along. Well, that's all right, miss. If you haven't any rooms, I'll manage. Never said I didn't. We have rooms. Whole hotel full. Just have to air them out. It won't take a minute. Business must be kind of slow. Who'd come here? Things being like they are. The gantries and all. Oh? Outlaws, you might say. Took a ranch the far side of town. Summers claims that Pete Gantry, he's the eldest, rode with Quadrell. Maybe he did. He's that mean. Nice neighbors, huh? <laughs> Not by our they ain't. Things was different before. A stage twice a week. Sunday south, Wednesday west. People going, people coming. What, uh, what happened? There I'd been a stage since spring. They seem to that all right. You mean the gantries? Well, who else? Freight line's about God, too. 
That means the mine has to close, don't it? I mean, what's the good of digging up silver if you can't ship it? Might as well leave it in the mountain. Makes sense. These gantries, hasn't anyone done anything about them? Some has, some hasn't. This ain't London, you know, to whistle up a bobby. Still, if you all stood together, perhaps... Uh... <laughs> That's what he thought. A lot of good it did him. Your father? My husband. I got papers what prove it. Well, it's just that you look so young and uh, perhaps a little out of place here. Come off it. Sorry. I ain't the only one. Town's fresh out of arrows. Guess that's why we have to buy one. Purgatory Wells, Mr. Onyx. Hotel taken care of you all right? The lap of luxury. Oh, uh, this is Angus Breck. Runs the freight outfits, member of the town council. Mr. Breck? It's a pleasure, sir. Sheriff Moran? Sheriff? Uh, you're aware of our uh, situation, I assume? Ah, oh, yes. They fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in their cradles. Hey? Oh, a bit of verse, Mr. Mayor. About a town in Germany. They had your same problem. A place called Hamlin. Oh, that's so? Too many rats. <laughs> An apt quotation, Mr. Onyx. Apt indeed. Are you suggesting we send for the Pied Piper? Well, haven't you? Oh, I, uh, I didn't know you were busy. I'll uh, come back later. Oh, come in, McCullough. Sit down, there's no secrets here. We're discussing poetry, as a matter of fact. Yeah. That's so? Uh, Browning, the Pied Piper of Hamlin Town. You see, Mayor, my illustrious predecessor ran into some difficulty. Seems he had a little trouble collecting his fee. Well, won't be any question about that. Oh, of course not. But then my uh, pipe, so to speak, play only one tune. So perhaps we could arrange for payment in advance. Well, I, I hadn't thought about that. I, Seems kind of a risky way to do business. My way usually is. With uh, five thousand dollars, that that's a lot of money. What do you think, Angus? Well, now, Mr. Mayor, if we can't trust Martin Onyx, whom can we trust? Oh, why not post his son with a neutral party, Mr. McCullough? Say. You mean he ain't with you? Oh, we met en route. That's right. My right scout for a wagon train. As a matter of fact, I was hoping we could water our stock here before we run the pass. Oh, I don't know about that. Our wells are pretty dry. Uh, well, seeing as how you're a friend of Mr. Ronix's, is it a deal then? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, something on your mind, McCullough? Yeah, but uh, it'll wait. <laughs> Oh, uh, some of the boys are planning a welcoming party down at the Red Board. Uh, suppose we fix the details then. Uh, that is, if you gentlemen care to attend. We'd be delighted. <laughs> Fine. Well, I'll be saying good afternoon. Oh, I can't remember if I said this or not, but uh, we're glad you're here, Mr. Ronix. Mighty glad. Matter of fact, man, so am I. Well, good afternoon.
You, uh, doing your homework? All that. <laughs> Fellows who write those must have quite an imagination. Would you believe it? He's got yarns in there about Martin Onyx I never even heard of before. Not mine. Not a bad likeness, though. Towards the front of the book. Huh? Oh, yeah, you figure this was drawn from life? Well, it could be. Wonder if this one was. Huh? Well, it was just a wanted poster I borrowed from the sheriff. A fellow wanted for salting a diamond mine down near Nogales. Goes by the name of Shaw. Randolph Shaw. I figured you might know him. Uh, afraid not. Of course, he's got lots of other names. Quite a few from what I understand. I imagine he has difficulty remembering himself. Must be quite a strain on the man. I like the weary day that I have worn so many winters out. I know not now what name to call myself. Shakespeare. Yeah, Richard II. That's very funny. Huh? This man Shaw was once an actor. He liked to quote Shakespeare. Well, it's a common crime, of color, but hardly a serious one. Unless he misquotes. You got a pencil around here? Huh? On the desk. Thanks. I did this once to Jim Bridges Harper's Weekly. I got wallowed for it, too. Incredible. Remarkable likeness. Yes, it is. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, you never know what to believe these days. You take a man like Martin Onyx. He must have organized a hundred raiding parties during the war. You'd think he'd make a target out of himself trying to bushwhack the camp. Silhouettes himself up against the sky. Doesn't make sense. Even with a fever, a thing like that would be second nature. But he did it. Or did he? Or maybe I just have a suspicious nature. Man can make a mistake, McCullough. You're making one right now, it seems to me. You think so? So you go to the mayor. And tell him this man he thinks is Martin Onyx is really Randolph Shaw or Richard II or any of a dozen other names. What happens? He might listen. It's conceivable. But he isn't going to like it. What did he say about the water? Something about the wells being low? But for a friend of Martin Onyx's, so? So you won't be anybody's friend then. Just an accessory after the fact. That is, if he listens. And if he doesn't listen, I get ridden out of town on a rail. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I should, of course, try to convince him to omit the tar and feathers. Thanks. After all, you did save my life. But I won't have much choice, will I? I mean, a man in my position has to live up to his reputation. That might not prove easy. Here we are at chapter 12. Martin Onyx. Good friend, bad enemy. Remind me not to play poker against you. You're very good at running out of bluff. Get a call? Maybe. What happened to him? Who? You know who I'm talking about. Depends on your point of view, doesn't it? Here? Here? In the public domain? Or he might be lying face down in a dry lake bed with alkali in his hair and a bullet in his back. I'd be willing to bet that Mr. Shaw put it there. Oh, no. He's not the violent type here, Mr. Shaw. Confidence man, card sharp, swindler, cheat, fugitive from justice. Well, fugitive anyway. Such a man as that rugged, hungry, running. Afraid to look behind him in case there's no one there. A man like that has to keep running. He's past the point of no return. Long time back. Not because he's afraid of death, it's not that. It's life, it's fate. To... But there is no life. Not here, anyway. Dead hills, dead lake, dead man. Corpse with his face. 
And he starts to laugh because fate dealt the last card after all. Dealt it face down. And maybe that's good. Maybe his luck has turned. One last card. What does he do, McCullough? How would you play it? Better fold. Pretty high stakes. Man's last hand usually is. There was an officer at Lookout Mountain during the war. His name was Randolph, Patrick Randolph. The first time under fire, the brigade was ordered to pull out. He panicked, started to run. Forgot to give the order, left his men behind him. I was in the relief column. There were two of his men left alive. Of course, that was a long time ago. But a man can't change, can he? Not really. Not under the name, not under the skin. Can he? I'm not sure. Do you? How long before your wagon train gets here? I'm expecting them day after tomorrow. Well, take a while to plan strategy. I don't have to make my own personal reconnaissance. And pull out about the time my wagon train drives, right? About. What about the town council and the $5,000? Well, you aren't seriously suggesting leaving it for the gantries, are you? You know, I'd like to see you play a real hand someday. Well, maybe I am. You used a pencil. Try an eraser. Well, how about it? Get a call? Check to the opener. I'm betting. The limit. So soon, Mr. Brecht? Oh, just a breath of air. <laughs> then I'll be back, ripe for the plucking. Uh, meanwhile, would you like to sit in with me? No, thanks. Maybe it's just as well. Your friend's good fortune is, uh, shall we say, legendary? Yeah, I see what you mean. forgot about Billy Bales. Lives in this town. Oh? Huh? Yeah, Billy was in your outfit. Was he? Yeah. A corporal, I think. Maybe you don't remember him. Well, there were so many men in the outfit, the names get all jumbled up. Well, Billy remembers you all right. Talks about you all the time. Matter of fact, it was Billy who first gave me the idea to send for you. Oh, Billy. Banjo. Plays the banjo. Oh, Billy ba uh, Bale. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, and then he's the damp night we spent together, wondering whether it was a loon calling or some ghost in a tattered blue tunic, and then Billy would break out his banjo and play. Yeah, good old Billy, I'd like to see him again. Hey, he's standing right over there at the bar. Really? Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll, I'll sit this one out. Hello, Billy. It's good to see you again. It's been a long time. Let's see, you were with me in Murfreesboro, wasn't it? 
Major Onyx? That's right, Billy. They told me you'd come, but I, I guess I didn't believe them. Well, now you can see for yourself. Sorry, Billy, I didn't know. That's all right, sir. I'm used to it by now. What happened? I reckon that scalp wound I got at Chattanooga was worse than they thought. The doc says it's a nerve. Never thought it took nerve just to see things. Not till I stopped seeing and found out how restful it is to have a world that looks the way you want it, instead of the way it is. You're a good soldier, Billy. You know, Major Onyx, you saying that, it's better than a whole chest full of medals. I just wish there was something that I... Ah, don't you let it fret you none, sir. I'm making out all right. And Miss Thatcher, uh, she lets me help out over to the hotel sometimes, along with my pension money and playing my banjo over the Saturday dances. I got no complaints. No, oh, I ain't saying it's a Sunday picnic being a blind man, but there's worse things. Lots worse. Them gantries is tough, Major. You're gonna need all the help you can get. Well, could be. I can still shoot pretty good if somebody points me in the right direction. Thanks, Billy, I'll remember that. I got good ears, too. Sometimes it, it's almost like I can see with them. When you said, hello, Billy, just now, I didn't need no eyes. I could see you just as plain, looking the way you did in camp the night before we took Chattanooga. I reckon you don't remember that night. Sure I do, Billy. You played the banjo. I did. I did. And you started the men in singing. Kept it up half the night. You still play those old songs? I'd be proud to, Major. See, the girl I left behind me, Seems to me like that used to be the Major's favorite. <laughs> Seems like it still is, Billy. DR was sad I left the maid. A lingering farewell taking her sighs and tears. My steps delayed. I thought her heart was breaking. In her read words, her name I blessed. I breathe the vows that bind me. And to my heart in anguish pressed. The girl I left behind me. The hour was sad, I left the maid. A lingering farewell taking. Her sighs and tears, my steps delayed. I thought her heart was breaking. In hurried words, her name I blessed. I breathed the vows that bind me. And to my heart in anguish pressed. The girl I left behind me. Dead, I tell you. Well, maybe so. Only he was in the redboard last night. It's all his life singing. Could be. One notch or two? Hmm? I was just wondering how many notches you cut when you kill the same man twice. <laughs> who you are. Who's that? In the Bible, Lazarus, the chap that rose up from the dead. Only it ain't you that's risen from the grave. It's us because of you. Two 
the man who calls himself Martin Onyx. Be out of town by sunup or it won't be Purgatory Wells anymore. It will be hell. Not just hot, burning. Our fire, your funeral, and the town's. Don't it have a signature? No. Guess it don't need none. If they'd do that, they'd burn the town? That appears to be up to you, sir. You think I ought to clear out? There's hardly any choice, is there? I don't know. Is there any firefighting equipment in town? Pumps, hoses? Just the pump at the wells. Well, organize a bucket brigade. Use the women and children. If you ain't out of here by sunup, them gantries will burn us out. And if I am out? I don't know. They'll starve you out or scare you out. So I don't have much choice, do I? One man can't do it. I will need deputies. I don't know, Mr. Onyx. There ain't much fight left in this town. Not much. Enough, maybe. How about it? Any volunteers? Like I said, Major, I got good ears. Thanks, Billy. Now, look, you listen. Who's next? I guess I've slowed up some, but I got a good aim and a steady hand. Two of us ought to make a man. Thanks, Sheriff. The hold the blind. What about the rest of you? I can shoot. Bird taught me how. This ain't women's work, Aggie. Then where's the men to do it? What are you afraid of, dying? That's easy, everybody does. It's why that counts and how. Like living. No trained troop major, but looks to me like they got what it takes. That's what it looks like, Billy. The men will meet here now before sunup. Women and children at the well. Aggie, you tell them what to do. Billy, why don't you play us a tune? Yes, sir. I suppose you want to have a meeting. Make your plans. Plenty of time for that, Mayor. There's something we have to finish. What's that? The dance! <laughs> Jig time, Billy! Jig time, Major. headed for the edge of town. Yeah, that's right. It's the Major, ain't it? How'd you know that? Figured it might be. 
A man could ride pretty far between now and sunup. Maybe even far enough. Yeah, maybe. Major Onyx used to talk about how there was times to fight and times to run away. About how a good commander never wastes his men in a lost cause. Only somehow, when it come right down to it, we always fought. Always whomped them, too, so maybe it weren't never a lost cause. Yeah, but this isn't a war, Billy. Ain't it, Mr. McCullough? No, and the people aren't soldiers, even if they're all fired up. Besides the... Yes, sir? Oh, nothing. Meaning besides, it ain't really Major Onyx? Maybe I can't see. But maybe what a man sees, he forgets after a while. Or it gets all mixed up in a lot of different pictures. The echo is a blind man's brain. That's like a tuning fork, hum. Keeps getting softer, maybe. But the note's always true. Major Onyx never called me Billy. He always called me New Orleans. On account of the song, you see. We all went down to New Orleans for bales, for bales. You knew, why didn't you speak up? He had some funny ways, did Major Onyx. But we'd have gone out and died for him any morning of the war. So I've heard. It was something he'd give us. Something we had all along, only seemed like it took him to make it show. Maybe it was something called courage. Oh, that's a sometime thing, Mr. McCullough. Like, like fear and hooping it up drunk. Pride. That's the stuff that counts. Pride in being a man. It works. Well, you've seen it work in the red board tonight. Sometimes, maybe. It even works miracles. Miracles come pretty hard. I take the chance. Well, now, you took a chance, didn't you, Mr. McCullough? Yeah, but I had my reasons. Such as? Such as my outfit has got to get water. That ain't it. Well, maybe I don't like measuring a man when he's all doubled up with failure. Maybe, maybe the time to measure a man is when he's standing on his toes, reaching up his, reaching up for the stars. Maybe that's what counts. Heading this way? Heading this way. I heard about an actor fellow once. He traveled around playing in a piece by Shakespeare. You know, about one of them old-time generals who thinks his wife is stepping out on him. Smothers her with a bed pillow. Doggone if this actor fella didn't end up doing the same thing. Well, sometimes those things happen, Billy. Just like your miracles. So long, Miss McCullough. I'll see you at sunup. You and Major Onyx. That's right, Billy. Me and the Major. Just, uh... Changed your mind. I was hoping you would. What happens at sunup? Purgatory Wells? Purgatory's a place where the Dan get one last chance, isn't it? It sure is. Good night, McCullough. See you in the morning.
This is ridiculous, Jedediah. Gantry's men are killers, train killers. We haven't got a chance. Martin Onyx says we have. That's good enough for me. Yeah, but how do we know he's really... What's that you were saying, Angus? Nothing, Jedediah. Nothing. Just my prayers, that's all. says he's Martin Onyx. I say he's a liar. I'll cover for you. You could be wrong, Gantry. Man like Martin Onyx might be hard to kill. History books. Martin Onyx's last fight. It must have taken ten bullets. Sometimes a man like Martin Onyx dies hard. Sometimes he doesn't die at all. This hold down, Chris. People needed it. Well, the weather in the Indians have been a little rough on us this past month, Bill. The spirits are getting a little low. It seems to be parking them up, though. A couple seem to be missing. Did you ask that oldest Cutler girl, Janie? Yeah, the special point of it. She said that she didn't have time for this kind of foolishness. Her younger sisters are over there. Did you ask the Peterson boy? Yep. He just turned his back, didn't answer me, and walked off. Ah, evening, Jenny. You gonna join us at the dance? Slick is there, isn't she? She the young one? Yeah. Yeah, she's there. All your little sisters are there. No, she should be in bed. She's got a sore throat. And I haven't had a chance to make the beds. We're running low on soap, too, Mr. Hale. Can I borrow some? Why, sure. I'll have Worcester bring some over right after the dance. We always seem to be borrowing things from you. Another baby on the way. It's, it's hard for a man to figure just how much is needed. Well, yes, I suppose it is. For a man to figure? Who are you talking about? Well, when father died and mother found out she was going to have another baby, I had to take over. Mother says that now I'm the man of the family. I see. Well, why don't you put on a dress and be a young lady for a while? Come on and join us. Janie? Yes, Mother? The water jug's empty, dear. Evening, Mrs. Cutler. Oh, good evening. Oh, I, I've gotten so heavy and awkward, I can do hardly anything for myself. <laughs> oh. 
The music sounds so gay. Yes, why don't you come on over and sit on the sideline? Oh, I, I'd better not. <laughs> Walking even that little distance is hard for me. <laughs> well, maybe you can talk Janie into coming over. Well, sure. You can go, honey. Uh, of course, the girls' beds have to be made. I, I suppose I could do it <laughs> if I move slowly. No, Miss Hale. I can't very well go in these jeans. The other women think it's disgraceful that I wear them at any time. Well, they'd be sure to think I was a complete hussy if I wore them to a dance. Oh, yes, I'll have a dress. Somewhere at the bottom of one of our trunks. I don't know which. I think I've forgotten how to dance. It's been a long time. My hair needs washing. I don't have time for that. I don't think there's enough soap in this whole train to get my hands properly clean. You thought it was strange when I called myself the man of this family? Well, I haven't had time to be a girl, so what else am I? I love my sisters and my mother dearly, but I wish I wasn't with them. I could be just for one hour, all alone, by myself. No family. And maybe I could feel like being a girl again. Right now, I have more important things to do than to tend dances. Well, some other time, then. By the way, have you seen Dick Peterson tonight? No, I haven't. But when you find him, you tell him to keep away from us. Keep away? My sisters, they hang around him constantly. When he thinks I don't see him, he plays games with him. Grown man. I don't like it, Mr. Hill, and I wish you'd tell him. I'll talk to her. Where was that Peterson boy when you invited him? Well, he was taking the brewer horses out to the meadow to graze. Bill, have you ever seen him with the little Cutler girls? Yeah, I saw him playing a jump rope game with him once. A what? Well, he actually wasn't jumping a rope. He was swirling the other end for him. The youngest one, Vicky, she was doing the skipping. Anyway, when he saw me, he gathered up the rope and then it like he was going to make a lasso and show him how to rope. So I saw it different. Gun, Dick. I've been around. Uh, catch yourself a cold? Nope. And there's no call for you to pity me, Mr. Hale. Oh. Was I pitying you? You walk in on a man when he's not expecting you. You catch him doing most anything. Murder, maybe. Stealing. Or even worse. Well, we got a nice hoedown going on over here. You've been invited to it. A lot of pretty girls would like to dance with you. What are you doing way out here in the wood? I can't dance. You know of a better reason? Can't you dance either? Or did you come here looking for me? Yes. A little of both. You know, Dick, all of us on this wagon train have been together ever since we left St. Joe. So naturally, we know quite a lot about each other. But we know practically nothing about you. Man of mystery, huh? You picked me up in the middle of nowhere with a bullet in me. You asked me how I got it. So I tell you, it's a couple of months ago now, and I forget how. How I got attacked by Indians and left for dead? Was that the story I told you? That was the story. Anything wrong with it? Is it true? The brewers asked me to drive for them, and I'm doing it. And they're satisfied. One of these days, we'll reach a town I'll cut into, and I'll cut out. 
That's all you have to know. You got no claim on me. You just let me keep my secret, Mr. Hale. And maybe my only secret is I, I haven't got one. Mm -hmm. Well, come on over and join us. I don't belong. What does that mean? It means what it says. I don't belong. They're families, most of them. They got each other. I'm a Johnny come lately. I try to mix, they'll think I'm horning in. Who needs them? I like being alone. So you won't be bothered when you come here to be sorry for yourself? You're given a dance, Mr. Hale, but you're neglecting your guests. They're probably asking right now where you are. So why don't you go back to them and leave me be? I do hope this one's a boy. For your father's sake. He did so want one. Every time one of you was due, he, he just prayed it would be a son. A boy makes a man feel immortal, kind of. It carries on his name. You girls will all get married, and then you'll be Joneses or Smiths or whatever, but a son. As far as you worrying about the Cutler name being lost, there'll be one of us to carry it on. Me. Well, how could you possibly? We, you mean you'll never get married? Oh, of course you will. One day, some nice boy will see how pretty you really are. And then the first thing you know, you'll be... Mother, do we have any salt left? Salt? Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, uh, what do you need it for, dear? Well, I want to fix a salt gargle for Vicky. She's got a very sore throat. Oh. I hope we don't have to borrow again from Mr. Wooster. Oh, I don't think he minds. <laughs> He's nice. Most men are nice. That's why it's so silly of you to talk about being an old maid. Well, we have enough for Vicky anyway. A woman without a man is only half a human being. I know. Oh. All right, Mother, I'll... I'll marry the first man I meet. Old man Callahan. <laughs> he's already married. Besides, yeah. he's almost 70. Well, then, maybe I'll marry that, that sneaky Peterson boy. Anyone so that I'm not half a human being. I don't know if that boy is sneaky or he's just kind of lonely. The girls all adore him. All of them. Yeah, why does he hang around kids that are so much younger than he is? Well, I, I don't know. No one else on the train seems to pay much attention to him. Well, Rini is 16. She's a young woman. And Ruthie's over 14. You mean he's in love with one of them? And, and this is his way of courting her? Oh, well, Vicky's his favorite, and she's only six. Where are you going? Get him. It's way past their bedtime. Looking for the girls? They went off with Dick Peterson. Well, I don't know. They all seem sort of secret about it. Once we get through that windy stretch of canyon, we'll have pretty easy going. Desert like, but flat. Mr. Hale, I can't find my sisters. Rebecca Brewer said that they went off with that Peterson boy somewhere away from camp. I don't know where they've gone, and I'm worried. Thank you, ladies. May I look forward to the pleasure of the next dance? Law, sir. Shouldn't we give the other gentlemen a chance? So far, you monopolized every measure we have trod. Monopoly? She's trying to say monopolize. She's always using big words, only she can't pronounce them. And half the time, she doesn't even know what they mean. I do, too. I was telling Sir Dickie that he's been hogging every dance, while the other noble courtiers await longingly. What 
What's she talking about? Who's waiting? Sir Wooster, Sir Bill Hawks, Sir Mr. Hale. I've been forgetting myself, ladies. I must give the others a chance. Sir Wooster, take your choice of these lovely damsels. Why, thank you, thank you. How about it, miss? Shake a leg with no buzzer like me? I love you, Dickie. And I love all of you, too. Rainy, Ruthie, girls, answer me. Oh, it's her. Whenever we're having fun, she's got to spoil everything. Since Papa died, she's so darn bossy. Uh, dance is over. It's later than I thought. You kids better get back to the wagon. Oh. Come on, I'll go part of the way with you. Wait a minute, you. Where do you think you're running off to? To my wagon. I'm not running. Well, what were you doing with my sisters? Just taking them back to your wagon. Well, why do you keep playing their games as if you were a child yourself? You leave them alone. You're much too old for them. He ain't too old for us. He's our friend, and we like him to play games with us. He don't pester us. He told us he loved us. Oh, he did, did he? This is ridiculous. A man your age, he doesn't tell little girls he loves them. And from now on, you're to keep away. Now, where were you girls just now? We went off by ourselves and had our own dance. Why? Why are you always sneaking off with them? A grown man, he doesn't play hopscotch and skip the rope with young girls. You small-minded little slob. If you were really a man, and instead of just acting and dressing like it, I think I'd kill you. But you're a girl, so they tell me, who wears pants and keeps her hands and face dirty to match her thoughts. <laughs> to talk to him like that. He's the best friend we ever had. You slapped him for no reason. I wish someone would tell me what happened. He's just about the nicest person in the whole world. Well, take this. Don't swallow it. Just gargle. No, I won't. You have a very bad throat, and if you don't gargle with salt water, you'll be sick. I hope I am. Uh, uh, Mickey. She said we mustn't see him again. I want to see him again. I wish someone would tell me what happened. Oh, I asked him where he'd gone with the girls, and he was very rude. He, he called me a slob. You started it. You got him mad. Take a good look at yourself, sister dear. Aren't you a slob? All right, all of you, get in bed. Now, you take this. No, I won't. I hope I die. Even the train. I was looking for one to maybe steal. But now you caught me, I suppose I'll have to buy instead. Well, buy or steal. Giacomo here would be your best bet if you're in a hurry. I'd want about $25 for him if you bought. Of course, if you stole him, there wouldn't be any cost until we caught up with you. 
Then you know the price you'd have to pay. You uh, leaving the train because of what Janie said to you? You know, you two aren't exactly a mutual admiration society. You're not even good judges of character because you're both wrong. And you don't believe that? Why don't you look at it from her point of view? Now, here she is with all those chores and all those kids to look after. Then one day, a good-looking young fella comes on the train under very mysterious circumstances. He doesn't pay any attention to her. Just stays by himself. Kind of mopish and unfriendly with everybody except her five little sisters. Pretty soon they won't pay any attention to her. Just want to go play games with him. And he goes off into the woods, dances with them when there's a public dance going on. Now, wouldn't you be a little concerned if you were her? No. I'd try to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'd try to understand that he was lonely, shy, doesn't feel at home with folks nearer his own age. All alone in the world, too, I'd say. And unwanted by everybody except five little girls who love him just as he is. And don't ask any questions. You seem to know quite a lot about me. Well, your actions the past few days, Dick, have told me quite a lot. It takes all kinds to make up the world or a wagon train. She'd like to leave her family, and you'd give anything to have one. If you could change places for a while, you'd stop hating each other. Well, Mrs. Brewer needs you to help her drive, so you better hang around, Dick. I'm leaving. Well, I don't quite know how you're going to make out. You haven't money enough to buy a horse, and you're not likely to get enough with the wages Mrs. Brewer pays you. And if you stole one, I'd have to get up a posse. When we found you, we'd have to decorate a tree with you. So... Your choice is kind of limited. Night, Dick. A fever. Well, you yeah. don't let him out of bed. If you're not better by tonight, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Hill for some medicine. Hi, Dickie! Hi, Dickie! Hi, Dickie! They're waving to you. They want to say hello. I see him. He's mad. The way our biggity sister talked to him, you can't blame her. Hold there, girls! Would you like a drink of water, dear? It hurts when I swallow. Take a little sip. It'll cool you off. Could I have a cup of water? Sure. Mm, you're burning up, too. You better get to bed. Well, go on. You're not well. Now, do as you're told and get to bed at once. That's what's the matter. We have to do everything you tell us to do. Go to bed. Get up. Eat your supper. Don't eat so fast. Don't eat so slow. Don't talk to Dickie Peterson, who was our best friend in the whole world, until you spoiled us. Now he won't even talk to us. We hate you. Now, there ain't no point in you folks hanging around here. Mr. Chris has taken care of everything. Folks say they're sick. Folks say it's the plague. Yeah, if something isn't done, we can get it, too. You folks are getting excited all over nothing. Janie's feeling just fine, and so is Mrs. Cutler. Chris wants you, Charlie. Yeah. Hurt to swallow, honey? Yes, sir. Open your mouth. Say, ah. Ah. Again. Ah. White spots are there. She's getting it. Are you sure that's what it is? The diphtheria, all right. 
Charlie, you ever had diphtheria? I don't know, Mr. Chris. My mother never told me, but I don't think so. That means you have no immunity, neither a Bill or Duke. I'm going to isolate this wagon, put it about a half a mile back at the end of the train, so there's no epidemic. Somebody will have to drive it. Well, I can manage. I told you that, Mr. Hill. Five sick little girls to look after? That'll take some doing. Well, I can do it. They'll let me. We can put Mrs. Cutler in the spare wagon. You can drive that. Me, Mr. Chris? She's in a delicate condition, you know. Well, there's nothing to worry about. The last I heard, it wasn't catching. We'll uh, hitch up your team. Now, there's no use keeping you people in ignorance about what's happening. It's diphtheria. What? what? But it won't spread. I'm putting this wagon far enough behind the rest of the train so that the rest of you won't be exposed. Now, get on back to your wagons and quit worrying. Well, suppose it's a stormy night, and I'm driving her, and the baby starts coming, and I'm all alone. And then what happens? You'll be the first midwife with whiskers in all of medical history. She'll have a hard time, poor girl. All the little ones are down with diphtheria. I heard. How you feel it? Miss Cutler, is everything under control back there? Just fine. You stop waking me up every five minutes. I'm sorry, ma'am. You go back to your nap now. Take it easy now. Mrs. Cutler, I'm sorry I didn't see that rut. I hope I didn't shake you up too much. It almost threw me out of bed. Don't you get yourself agitated now, Mrs. Cutler. You just hold everything. Oh, how did I get in this? Hot, isn't it? Have you heard how Janie and the little girls are getting along? No, ma'am. Now, lie still. This will make you feel better. I don't want to feel better. Now, of course you do. Now, please, Vicky, keep this on your forehead. If you don't do as you're told, you never get well. I don't want to get well. Lizzie, that is a completely stupid thing to say. Well, you ought to know about saying stupid things. We learned how to say them from you. You're our big sister. All right. You won't let me do anything for you. I know, I know you don't like me since that. But I'm the only one who can take care of you. Now listen, all of you, you're very sick. And even if you do hate me, you can't hate yourselves. It was for your sakes. It wasn't good for you to see so much of that boy and in secret. Why was he always playing your games? Because he loves us, and you don't. Janie? Janie Cutler? The team has wandered off the trail. You go inside, you better stop the wagon. I was afraid of getting too far behind. Well, you couldn't get too far, but what we could find you. How's everything going? There's no change. How's Mother? Oh, she's bearing up real well, everything considered. Worcester's got me a little worried, though. The other day, he had a sudden craving for watermelon. Hm. Kids behaving all right? They're a little beast. They won't let me help them. They... They say that I, uh, I don't love them. They keep telling me they hate me. Well, they won't take their medicine, water, food. They're gonna die. Want me to ask young Peterson to help you? No. If you think I'm gonna let my stubborn little sisters and that hateful boy lord it over me. What are you gonna do then? I'll manage somehow. <laughs> Mr. Hale, this is 
Brewer's got something to ask you. Rebecca, you want to see me? Me? Why, no. Well, Dick said you wanted to ask me something. Uh, you wanted to know about the sick kids, you said. Oh, oh, of course. How are they? Well, they're pretty bad, Rebecca. They're not only very sick, but they're mad at Janie. Won't do as she tells them. There isn't much you can do for diphtheria, but they won't even let her do that little. Mad at her? Well, for goodness sake, why? Oh, they have some fool notion in their head that their big sister's their enemy, who's taken their best friend away from them. She asked for me? No. She say anything about wanting me there? No. Then what am I supposed to do? Crawl there on my stomach and beg to help? You did ask her if she wanted me around, didn't you? I told her I could ask you to help her. Yeah, she said, don't bother. I'm still poisoned, huh? Still not to be trusted. And if anything happens to those kids, she's to blame, isn't she? Not me. I wouldn't know how to figure that. Maybe it's the kids' fault. Maybe if they die, it serves them right for giving their love to someone who won't help them because their sister hurt his feelings. <laughs> You were a child yourself. I love you, Dickie. From now on, you're to keep away. Maybe if they die, it serves them right for giving their love to someone who won't help them because their sister hurt his feelings. I love you, Dickie. See you a minute, Mr. Hale. Well, sure. Uh, Mrs. Brewer says she can drive till I get back. Anything you want me to tell Janie? I don't know. Yes. Tell her I think you're a great guy. Be a little hard convincing her of that. I've had some experience with diphtheria. Oh, did you have it? No, but a lot of the other kids came down with it. Your family, huh? In the orphanage where I was brought up. I watched the doc treating them, so if she'll let me. She'll have to. If she won't, you take over and send her back here. Hi. Is the wagon master here? No. Nope. Well, we got business with him. Where's he at? Right over here. I'm the wagon master. What can I do for you? Well, we're looking for a young fella. Might be on your train. What's his name? Didn't have one, rightly. Might be using mine. And your name is? Peterson. He's a wanted man, mister. What's he wanted for? She, she must have fainted or something. She's been sort of mopey dopey last couple of days.
my God. I, I went for help. I, I think I've caught it. I can't see you. Who are you? I'm the grown man who plays kid games with your sisters. to know we won't have to string you up. The horse came back. Thanks. Peterson's still with the train? Yeah, well, he's still hanging around. They searched the train pretty thoroughly yesterday. Couldn't find you, of course, but he and the law have a pretty good idea that you're still around. Peterson tells me he thought he'd kill you when you two had a shootout. But later, when he came back to bury you, decent of him. Uh, and he also wanted your gun, which he claims you stole from him. Anyway, when he didn't find your body, he decided he'd only wounded you. Then he ran into a family of Paiutes. Remember those Indians came to the train begging for food some time ago? They had three little ones, one a papoose. Nice kids. And you gave them most of your supper. Well, maybe you shouldn't have done that, because that made their parents remember you. When he described you to them, they said you were on this train. And he wanted to know why this wagon was so far behind the rest of them. Is he coming here? Well, he didn't seem too anxious when I told him it was a plague wagon. Then he wanted to know if anybody died. Could be one of them will. The little one? No. Janie. <laughs> Hello, girl. If anything, have you done for her? I'm not letting her die, if that's what you're hinting. Giving her cold compresses, trying to get her to eat something. She don't want help from me. Well, that hard breathing, were the, were the other kids as bad as that? No. I think her windpipe's closing up. One of the kids in the orphanage had the same thing. Doc had to cut his throat open and stick a tube in. Otherwise, he would have choked to death. Uh, tracheotomy, I think they call that. Well, if she gets worse, would you know how to... No, and I wouldn't do it even if I did. Because if it didn't work, you'd all say I deliberately killed her. Well, the next town, the nearest I can figure, is about four or five hours right away. I'm going to send Duke in there and see if he can find a doctor. What are you going to tell Peterson? Those kids need you a lot more than the law does. By the way, what is your name? I don't know. Guess I was taken to the orphanage when I was pretty young. Last names were like candy in that place. Most of us never got either one. So I borrowed Peterson's name when he bought me. Bought you? 25 silver dollars. Cheap for a slave. Though I fetched 10 dollars more than they got for most of the other boy kids. I was pretty husky at 14. Oh, it wasn't called slavery. Bound boy, indentured apprentice. Though you couldn't tell the difference with the naked eye. I'm not going back, Mr. Hale. I'll kill or die first. You take care of him, Dick. I hope I can get a doctor here by morning. I got some gruel cooking. Have it for you in a minute. 
We love you anyway, Dickie. What do you mean, anyway? You're cooking. But don't feel hurt. We'll eat it because we know you mean well. <laughs> well, if you're that hungry, you're practically cured. I'm itching up. I'm going to find a town and a doctor. I don't know what to do for her. Please come in for a minute, please. <coughs> Can't you do something, Dickie? I did do something. I hitched up the wagon so I can get her to a doctor. Do you know where the next town is? No, I don't. Well, then how are you... I don't know, but it's, it's better than waiting here till Hale gets here with the doctor. She may not last till morning. Get back in bed. She stopped breathing. kissing her? He's not. He's trying to revive her by giving her his own breath. He's never had it. He can catch it from her. He's very noble. <laughs> I told you it happened out there when I'm alone with her, and on a stormy night like this, too. And baby coming? Yeah. Well, good. We'll get Mrs. Brewer and a couple of the women. They'll take care of everything. I can't. What's the matter? Well, I hate to even tell you I don't want people to make fun of me, but I've had the darndest cramps in my stomach here all day long. Those well, sympathetic pains, Charlie. Shows you're a kind, understanding character. Are you sure? Well, I've been worried all day. I thought I was starting something I couldn't finish, you know. Well, you stay here. I'll get the women. Yeah. Where's Duke? He went into town to see if he can find a doctor for the kids. Hope he can make it a night like this. Well, I think somebody ought to sit here with me. Rebecca? Mrs. Gaines? It's Mrs. Cutler's time. You girls better get busy. Well, who was the boy this time? I didn't think she was due for a week yet. Why don't you go after them? This fellow here swore on a warrant. I got to act on it. How come you shot it out with him? He'd run away a dozen times before. I told him then when I caught up with him, he'd come peaceful or else. And if you catch up with him this time? Same terms. Didn't you get your $25 worth of work out of him since he was 14? Just how much? How'd you know when I got him? How much I paid for his indenture? I'm a mind reader. and it's supposed to have the sick kids on it. It can't be any place else. boy. 
You can cut out the kissing game. He's not kissing her. He's trying to save her life. You don't even like her. You leave him alone. Get out of the way. He'll hold. It doesn't appear he's trying to run away. mouth-to-mouth -mouth technique of resuscitation, young man. Well, one of the boys in the... Uh, where I was brought up. He fell in a creek and he couldn't swim. By the time we fished him out, he was pretty bad. He's a good friend of mine and there's nothing else to do, so I tried it on him. Didn't work. He died. Well, it certainly worked spectacularly well on this young woman. You showed great initiative and presence of mind. And you know you owe him your life, don't you? Now, in the ordinary course of events, you'd reward him by marrying him. But speaking from personal experience, I'd say that a greater reward would be not to marry him. Well, just give her a week's rest and she'll be as good as new. And someone here owes me two dollars and a night's sleep. It's all right. <laughs> you kids get back in bed. You're not well yet. He's beginning to sound like her. What town is it you work out of, Sheriff? Cranston. At Nebraska? Yeah. Well, I think you can go on home now. You just run out of authority. This is no longer Nebraska. This is territory. You can take your friend with you here. No, you just wait a minute. No, you just wait a minute. You put one hand on that boy and I'll have you up for false arrest. You've had a big chunk out of his life. You've worked him until he couldn't take it anymore. Now you're going to leave him alone. $25 he cost you. Lying for depreciation, a little wear and tear. He's seven years older now. There's 20. And you'll have to make that do. Is that the law here about? Come to think of it. I guess it is. You've been driving with Mrs. Brewer for two months? Yeah, ten dollars a month. Have you collected any of it yet? That's twenty dollars. You owe it to me. The both of them doing real fine, too. You know, we expected a boy, you know, but we just took what the good Lord gave us. You know how it is. <laughs> George, you get one? I'll take two. I like you. Chick, you get one? <laughs> you're acting like you're his father. Well, I'm a godfather. And that's almost as good in it, and it doesn't cost as much. <laughs> I'll rock cigar. Now, oh, uh, wait a minute. I tried to get bonbons for all you girls, but I couldn't find them anyplace. Looked on every rock. <laughs> Have you seen Dickie? Since he's been driving for you folks, we don't get to see much of him. Well, Mama wants him. Little Lucy's got the colic, she thinks. But she wants him to look at her. Anna, since he helped Janie, you think he was a big doctor or something. Lucy, that's the new one, isn't it? Yeah, she yells all the time. Only Dickie can make her stop. You know, since we got over being sick, things have changed an awful lot. And not for the better, either. Wouldn't you know? She isn't sick anymore. Why is he? He isn't. They're kissing. We had much more fun when she was a slob. <laughs> <laughs> 